rock and roll. So I suppose if everyone says the name, it's just good for, for people to know. I know you're Sean, right? I'm Sean. Sean, yeah. you're the eldest kid in school. I'm six years old, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Colin Flynn. Kieran Fox. Last Rats. Lucian Albich. Kieran Crimes. <laughs> Remy. Glenda Segrigi. Hi. Uh, Mark Brady. Matthew Brown. Beautiful. Now I'm thinking when, when Sean came to cast 12 Angry Men, it's fantastic. 1955, it was a play. 1954, I think originally it was a, a, and then it was a, a book and then a play. A telly play, wasn't it? So it was, yeah, it was a play and then it was turned into the telly. There you the go. And then that great Sidney Lamette movie from 57. 57, yeah. For, for you guys, were, were any of you aware of this story before you got involved in this? Because it is a, seen as a cinema classic, but I don't know if it would be something that you ever heard of. Yeah, we studied it in English class. Ah. T.Y. did. Right. And it's Reginald Rose, the original writer, and, and, and it's the bizarre thing is, like any great work, it just seems like it could be written today on some level. There's mm. always this great resonance with The Kill a Mockingbird or yeah. the, with this, or there's certain kind of works. Who's, whose decision was it? Your own decision or was it the school's? Or? Yeah, no, I, I chose it. Um, I suppose what we wanted to do was something that had a kind of a, an ensemble piece and had so many great characters. So the biggest change was we changed it from 12 Angry Men to 12 Angry Jurors. So right. We have, is it six or seven female parts? Um, uh, and then yes. including the prosecuting lawyer. So it's pretty much a balance between both yeah, uh, for male and female parts. And then we change it from America of the 50s to modern Ireland. So we have made a small, few small little changes to make it relevant to uh, today's audience. But right. it's kind of the same, obviously the same story and the same idea and the principles of justice and truth all are you know it, it rings through the ages you know well i, I know that in the in the mid 70s in england i think that the, the the way the courts worked is that you were innocent until proven irish i think that was <laughs> our main kind of uh, motivation yeah. for finding out but i don't know whether you found when looking into the irish situation now and you're setting it in irish modern times were there certain quirks that were kind of particular to obviously the law is the law and good and bad is, is mm. always going to be the same but well the one thing i was in the 50s film is uh the, the kid is going to be uh, executed. All right. It'll be the, the chair, uh, where obviously that doesn't exist today. It's so only in Kerry now, I think, isn't it? I think so, yeah, yeah. Carsevine, somewhere like that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was just a, a small thing, but so what do we have to change it to, you know, life imprisonment or, um, so just small little things like that, but, and then the, uh, they have to have a unanimous decision either way, isn't that right? right. And but yeah, I suppose that the, what the, the, the itch in that movie that and, and the story, the original story that keeps people going back to it is that it does go between, you know, as the jurors do, between innocent and guilty and, and, and various different circumstantial evidence. For I don't know for you guys if there was a, a, a change when you read the, the piece or now that you've studied it, if that changes over time that you the way you're looking at, at how it's uh, how the arguments are going and, and how you feel about it. Because some people the law is brilliant and other people the law is an ass and. I don't know if you, if you guys, if it changed as you studied the play and kind of got worked on it, so I don't know if there was a, a shift at times about how you felt. You don't really think about it until you have to act it out, almost right. like. So you're just kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, it's a thing, I kind of know it. And then you have to be in a courtroom and pretend like you are actually going to sentence someone and you have to kind of change your views a little. But the way the, the, the writing goes is that you, you kind of go, you're sympathetic towards different arguments and, and, it, and they're contradictory and, they, and they, they keep on bouncing left and right and that very notion that you're never quite sure entirely, because often it is a case if it's not just black and white. And it's I not think just at, even at the end of the play, and we've, we've discussed this before, that it's a strong possibility that at the end of the play that the, the boy did actually stab his father. And I think some one of the, the characters says that, you know, you could... What if you change all our minds and the boy did stab his father? And that's uh, an ambiguity that's left, but the whole yeah. thing relies on the burden of proof, you know, and whether they're convinced or if there's reasonable doubt. And I think that's what uh, Oron's character, he isn't here today, but Juror 8, that's mm -hmm. the thing that he keeps speaking about. It's like, you know, you know, maybe it did happen, maybe it did, but mm. maybe it didn't, you know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe, and that's it has to be beyond uh, reasonable doubt. and. I think something that we saw obviously recently in, in the media, you know, with trials and prosecuting and, you know, the truth and what, you know, people saying it has to be proved in the court of law for it to stand. It doesn't matter about your your personal opinions or your pers personal prejudice. And I think that's something we've kind of, we've been exploring and discussing as we've been doing this. Yeah. 
Do any of you go method while you're while you're you know getting in ready for the play? I don't know if you get quite angry or, or start to uh, <laughs> start to resent other members of the cast for their opinions. <laughs> but does it? I don't know if it has sort of tapped in. I don't know whether you, you get that sort of feeling that because in any good you know you're reading the book, you just get into it. You just feel there is a you know you're actually involved. Has it? I don't know if that's kind of worked out. Have you shouted anybody here yet? Anybody? Broken down, or yeah, I, I get the strange urge to yell at younger kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's just natural. That, that, yeah. stay, that stays with you all your life. <laughs> what about you, Remy? You have a, an angry character to play. Have you? All I can think of is Orin Wall. Orin Wall? Yeah. I'm oh. sad. Yeah. <laughs> that's your age, so yeah. yeah. That's your red flag, is it? Yeah. <laughs> And I'm, I'm missing the trick there. Oran Wall. What's Oran right? Wall is the actor who plays Juror Eight. Right. Right. Remy gotcha. plays Juror Three, so they're right. antagonistic in the play. <laughs> so and I suppose in a way, the casting of the original film, because I, I never saw the telly play, and I know it's been it's been on stage many different times. There was a, a comedian in 2003. They just did a full Bill Bailey and a bunch of comedians did it in, in, in London, and they've had 12 angry men and women, 12 angry jurors. They've had 12, 12 angry women, which I say would be quite scary. Um, <laughs> <but> <laughs> But yeah, I don't know when it came to the casting, whether there was a, a, a case of, obviously you can, you know, you have skill and you can act and all that, but then there's a, there is that sort of thing of looking for something within the, within the, the actor that the, yeah. it sort of lends itself to a good balance of characters, because there are these different kind of characters. So I don't know if that was kind of part of the process or... Yeah, I mean, we obviously had our uh, auditions. Um, so myself and Sharon Hennessy, who's also directing it with us, like we discussed about what we thought the emotionally what the, the actor brought to it but physically as well I mean for George Six like Matthew's a big guy and he's quite intimidating uh, and he's the one who um, he sticks up for Colin's character the old man uh, so right. it's both from a, their, I suppose the personality or the what they brought from a, uh, an emotional point of view but also the physical you right. know side so I think both kind of would you would anybody here be kind of thinking acting would be a good um obviously it's it's a ridiculous line of work to be in and, and you'll never make money at it but i don't know if you if you get a bug when you're in, involved in something like this it is such great work and it's it's beautifully written and it's a great feeling of being in a gang really while you're making something uh, anybody got the acting bug from this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of them were in the musical. Uh, Kieran was in the musical. Oh, the School of Rock thing the recently, or the oh, High School Musical was high recently. School yes, yes. School yes. There we go. Yeah. Ah, and then the two lads here are from Germany, so they're two exchange students, Lars. Lucy. Ah, okay. How are so, you guys? Uh, All right. Good and tag. <laughs> so actually, Juror Eleven, who is a foreigner in the play. Nice. Was, uh, there we go. He's on full typecast. Full method. He went from birth. He went method on this role. That's it. <laughs> So we should say it's on. You're on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at the end of April. The uh, is it Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, twenty fourth, twenty fifth, and twenty sixth. Seven thirty. It's only five euro, which is amazing. It's, it's great value. It's in the yeah. Castle Inn, which is a fine, fine venue. Lovely little theatre, yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, hopefully this is kind of a fairly regular thing. I don't know if it's you. You do this every six months or every year. Or uh, we've had one production a year since two thousand and six. Oh, so uh, yeah, we've Magic. had a huge amount of. Last year they did Sive, uh, the Beauty Queen of Le Mans. We did. Right. Harold Pinter play the dumb waiter, so yeah, we've uh, an, uh, an eclectic mix of plays going back yeah. then through the years. Now, when the play is over and, and everyone has to get back to their normal lives, is there any kind of anger management course you can give? Is there any? <laughs> I think the school provides maybe a few weeks of just even just a pillow to punch or yeah, something. Really. <laughs> you might speak to Mr. Ivers about that, will you? Yeah. <laughs> See if you can sort it out. Nice. 